This is Satan from the Corpse Paint Show in Dallas, Texas. And we're proud to have Claire Cunningham as our guest. And Claire, it's great to see you. You look wonderful. Thank you. Well, I did a live um, stream a little earlier, so I'm a little more presentable, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so you live in America now. I sure do. I'm stateside. You're stateside now. Yeah. Uh, just as a reminder to some of our viewers, you were a guest on our show in 2017. You were just kicking off your solo career. And um, uh, viewers can find that on our YouTube channel, Corpse Faint Show. Uh, and then just search Claire Cunningham. And Claire is C-L-A-R-E. Um, Hi. <laughs> and we talked to you, uh, it was a snowy night and you were in Stockholm. And uh, you're it's just probably May as well because it always snowed. It like snowed yeah. all the time there. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but now you live in Nashville, right? I'm based here now. I kind of split my time between Massachusetts and Nashville. Yes, but I'm here. Um, yeah, I've been in America for a little over two years. So um, yeah, I love it. We're glad to have you in America. <laughs> yes, I know because you are. Where are you? You're down Dallas. South? Yeah. In Dallas. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how is it there? Like, what's the lockdown? Are you in lockdown or? Yeah, we're in lockdown. Everyone is is having to work from home. Uh, you know, it's it's limited what you can go outside for. Mm -hmm. um, probably similar in Nashville, right? Yeah. I mean, there is a so-called lockdown in place. Um, not everybody is uh, adhering to it, um, but uh, yeah, everywhere is pretty closed. There's nothing going on. So well, it's, it's okay, so you back years ago, you told me that you work out six days a week, and I know earlier today you told me you you had time to to get a walk in. So, what are you able to go outside and get a walk in, or a jog, or a bike ride? Oh yeah, like people are still like meeting up and partying. This is what the problem is here. So, um, yeah, I mean, people like we're not we're not in lockdown per se. You know, it's not like there are police around, but there's nobody. You know, people are still out and about doing non-essential things. Um, right. So, you know. It's that's I think that's where the problem is lying right now here in the States, especially. <laughs> hey, um, a lot of creative people in Nashville. You're probably surrounded by great musicians. Oh, my God. Like the best of the best, the cream of the crop. Um, and, you know, there's just so many different styles of music here, too. Yeah. Um, which is just so wonderful. Obviously, people associate Nashville, country and yes, yeah, uh, country predominantly. But, um, you know, for the likes of myself, who's not. Um, and a lot of LA have moved over here too. So um, yeah, it's um, it's just a town full of just great, motivated, creative people. So yeah. it's a wonderful place. <laughs> you, I remember you telling me you um, you're like up all night and then sleep during the day, don't you? Yes. So my bedtime is typically the last two mornings has been 7 a.m., which has been way too late. Um, yeah, 6, usually 6 a.m. If, if an early to bed for me would be like 5. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just I've always been that way. It's, But I don't actually, I sleep less now. So I, I sleep about 
four and a half, five hours a night. Um, but I um, I do, it's just like, I'm very creative at nighttime. I, I, I just, when everybody's energy has left and, and, and is, um, is a little quieter, I find I thrive more. So I use the daytime to do, or I did at least, I was writing in the day, working out and then performing at night and then, um, you know, catching up on like administration and, uh, you know, cause I think people forget that artists have to do a lot of like, I have a website to update, social yeah. media to update, all, every poster that you see, like that takes at least 15 minutes of my time just to create it, put it together, post about it, write the, you know, the post. And I know it sounds trivial, but it's actually like, and if I have something every day, yeah. even in this quarantine, I'm like, oh my God. Something well, uh, Claire, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a poster of you. I'm gonna steal a picture from your website, I think. And then we're gonna create a graphic for the show. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Whatever you need. <laughs> now, Claire, is there a connection between exercise and creativity? Yes. I um, believe that. For me personally, definitely. Um, creative people in their very nature do not have what you would call a normal or an average brain. So we are stimulated, I think neurologically at, at least, we use uh, both sides of the brain too. And so um, it's why a lot of creative people, a lot like people say, oh, they're a bit strange or they're a bit, you know, it's just due to the very nature of our um, brain works. And so for me, working out is my meditation. It's a release of everything personally. Um, you know, the endorphins I get from it is just insane. Um, it makes me eat healthier. Um, and just, it's just, it's an escape. Um, you know, a lot of people have different ways of escaping and some musicians and creative people use drugs and alcohol or other forms of, um, you know, abuse of things to the body. Whereas I've always done the exercise. Now you can, of course you can over exercise and you can and I've done that before and I've burnt myself out and um, but I have found that balance where I can actually just you know completely go to a different place the phone goes off you cannot text me or call me when I work out it's just it's it's a it's a zone that you can get into and I think what that's why a lot of you will see a lot of creative people too who are as much into fitness as they are music it's just it's the perfect escape I think. agreed hey um you're in nashville there was a tornado last month i i heard a rumor that you were that close to it yeah i was uh two blocks away and so when i was uh i was on stage and um we you know there were there were a few like uh tv screens um up in the venue and you know, we were getting word that there was this like storm coming and nothing new here, you know, so nobody really paid much attention. And then we could hear the sirens go off. Um, I thought it was, you know, I, we they get tested and we've heard them, I've heard them, you know, in the past and nothing's ever come of it. And then the Amber Alert started on everybody's phones and it literally said seat cover now. <laughs> And we were like, what's going on? And then um, we, I, I got, felt this like gust of wind come in the door. So I got off the stage and um, everybody was like, the power kept going on and off. And so people were kind of getting a bit like angst. And I said, nah, nah, it's nothing to worry about. You know, we've, this happens or has happened before. And um, I even took, I remember taking uh, a video and sending it to my family going, oh yeah, they said there's a tornado coming. I, I mean, and two blocks over, it was just ripping the entire city to, like, it was just crazy. Um, and then we learned more of it because uh, we played for, I think, a, I don't know, another, another while after that. And 
I, uh, I had even cycled into um, the show because it wasn't very far away. And I remember getting on my bike to go home, not realizing what had gone on. And I thought it was really eerie. And we had heard there was a tornado, but we had no idea of the destruction. And when I got home, I, I just, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Was your, was your home okay as well? Thankfully, yes. It didn't hit my home. It hit friends' homes, though. So I had friends who, who lost their homes. Um, oh. Hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. Like it was just, it, and actually, so the next day, um, I was uh, due into the studio because I'm recording a um, an EP right now, and it was the band and some some really like really well known players here um, were booked for the next day, and so um, I woke up to like ninety three messages from everybody all over the world asking, was everything okay? Um, but uh, some of the band members, uh, luckily all were fine, but they were coming from areas that had been hit. So they were like delayed and it was just like, it was the weirdest, yeah. oddest time. Like, And I'm sure everybody has since seen this, the destruction. It's wild. You, you, were, you were riding home on your bike right after our tornado hit two blocks away. Yes. I mean, this is a Wizard of Oz, isn't it? Yeah, and I actually have a song that I'm going to be releasing called No Place Like Home. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, there... <laughs> it's, it's meant, it's, it's, it's just, it's in the pipeline, right? Um, okay. Well... Yeah, no, I did. I Honestly, so I used to, or, you know, whenever I would cycle or I was going to be on my bike, I would always check the weather. And I had checked the weather that evening and there was no tornado warning at all. So I, it just literally came out of the blue. And that, I think that's why um, it, was, it was hard to comprehend for a lot of people because it was so, like even the Amber Alerts, they just came on the phone and was like, get cover now. And like, I know the Basement East, um, the famous, um, venue that got uh, destroyed their workers had less than 60 seconds to get down into the basement and like it was just yeah crazy yeah we're, we're glad you're okay thank and, you uh, and all your band members uh made it made it in to hopefully help you finish uh, the ep yes so they did so the next morning um it was it was a weird day i think i needed it though because I am an empath and I don't know, unless you've ever experienced being part of um, a trauma that hits an area, it's, it's, it's a really weird feeling that comes over you. And one of like, obviously I think everybody now knows what it feels like because we're in the middle of a pandemic. And, and so it's just like, it was, it was one of a nice distraction, I guess. Um, because you know when you're in a studio the doors are closed and you're all in there and you're in the zone and but you know we were all literally in between recording having to go out and answer the phones to everybody because it had just hit on the news and it was worldwide like my brothers in australia had heard about it it was yeah um but yeah no everybody thankfully was fine and is okay and the city has you know come to a standstill of course um but we were lucky to have those couple of weeks before right. the pandemic hit to at least allow them to you know get somewhat um started on the recovery gotcha okay and you mentioned earlier uh the the variety of uh genres and influences in nashville and and let's talk about claire for a minute you you see you belt out you can belt out rock and roll we know, we know that you, you sung uh, right on and, and you, you know, you sing that traditional Irish uh, yeah. and, and, um, and you love, you love country blues. Um, and, and now you've got this new song, Carry Me, which is EDM. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am the rainbow of all music styles. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, Actually, this is, it, it's, you're going to, um, 
finally, I think, get to hear the actual authentic Clara Cunningham once this... Uh, we're still deciding whether it's going to be an EP or whether I'm going to do the, um, the three... I can never say it. Three tracks? Three tracks separately. Um, Eddie and Justina over at RCA Studios, where I've been recording, they're amazing, by the way, um, listened to... I think it was 89 work tapes um, before they uh, kind of decided what the sound was going to be and to see what exactly is it. Because I have a lot of styles, yes, and I can do a lot of styles. Um, but when you want to rebrand and market yourself, it's an idea to kind of hone in on what is, you know, I'm never going to just be stuck in one category i know that but, but, um, but they want to be able to market it yeah you know and I, I i've always known that and i've known that to be a really important factor of being an artist um you don't want to be too confusing for people um <laughs> but you know it's it's and and i could tomorrow go down just being a celtic artist and be very successful in that and that could be and that is my soul um but I would miss my rock and my blues. So we, um, we've kind of found the perfect balance, I think, in the three songs of all those elements. Um, the Celtic thing I'm probably going to always have on the side and, and I'm going to keep releasing stuff. But um, yeah, uh, it's kind of fun because with, with especially Celtic music and, and a singer, uh, you can add a lot of flavors from different styles. So you get a lot of Celtic rock, uh, Celtic EDM now, if that's even a thing. Um, <laughs> and like even like Dermot Kennedy, he's an Irish artist. Um, he's pretty new on the scene and he's mixing it with like hip hop kind of, you know, stuff. And it's so cool. I, I mean, music has evolved a lot and is, and is constantly changing. And I think, um, you know, it's... It's beautiful because you don't have to box yourself anymore as, well, as much. Yeah, and, and, and uh, audiences have evolved, I think, too, Claire. And so, so I, you know, I want you to know my opinion that audiences will embrace and understand your blending of genres, even if it's in one song. Make it you. As yeah. long as it's pure and it's honest and it's you and it's raw, we, we, we may just full on accept that. Yeah, thank you for, um, you know, addressing that because I think um, that's, that's the number one thing. I think people will follow you and support you if you're authentic to yourself and you don't succumb to the different kind of, you know, uh, categories or genres that people expect you to be. Because I think a lot of artists always want to sound like somebody else and I, that's never been my objective in music I've always kind of done my own thing I guess and sometimes that will take you longer like your path is going to take you longer but um somebody always has to be that authentic person right um like I guess David Bowie or Prince or whoever like they never probably sat down and thought I want to sound like such and such they did their style and they created what is now their, you know, uh, stamp and their um, uh, brand, I guess. So I've always, like, don't get me wrong, I've had many offers and, and different things, but it would have cost me my, um, you know, my own kind of soul and I'm not going to sell out to be somebody that I don't want to be. And yeah. Yeah. that's just that's as simple as that. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, us as an audience, we want to see someone who is enjoying every moment of it on stage. And you know what we look for? We look for the little things, the little gleam in your eye. Mm. And we know you love what you're doing. And that, 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 that makes me embrace your art. Yes. And I think that goes to, to, to say with anything that a human does, like mu music is, of course, yes, um, but you have a choice in life and you should always choose what feels good and what's good for you. 
um, and not for other people because I've always said if if you if if you're doing something to make other people happy, yeah, great, they're happy, but you're miserable. And then people aren't gonna get the the goodness side of somebody who's not doing something that they're passionate about. Right. And so, and also uh the mistake that I think a lot of people think if you're going into the music industry um to make money, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're you're in the wrong industry. Um, it should always, first and foremost, be your passion and because you want to. But I think that's why a lot of people do continue doing it. Like when people say, "How? Why have you never given up?" Or it's just not even an option. Like you don't. It's right. it, it's your it's your soul. So you know. Um, yeah, for for that. Um, you know, I, I, I've always and will always love what I do and I will always stay true to it. And, um, you know, when people over the years used to say, never change who you are. Don't let me or fame change you. And I was like, that could only happen if you're not a real person and you're doing it for the wrong reasons. I've never done music to for that. I've always music to me. I'm here to heal people. I'm going to heal this world with my music, I promise you. And I'm getting a lot of callings about this lately. Um, not to get all spiritual on you guys, but this is, and I know why I'm here and why I've managed to get to where I am because I want to be able to share my, uh, my struggles and my joys with everybody and hopefully they can jump on board and feel yeah. something too. And nothing does that better than... Uh, Irish music, nothing does that better than probably country blues. You know, you, a, a sad song can tell a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of music because depending on your mood or your scenario or your life or your situation, there's always going to be a lyric or some form of music that you can relate to. So, um, that's why it's like so therapeutic for people along for aside the musicians it's therapeutic for us to be able to uh, speak about our lives if if you are a personal like as i am i'm an artist who sings real um life material usually but um you know it's if you're if you've just met the love of your life and you're happy love songs are gonna suddenly be something you can relate to if you've just divorced or you're in a bad situation right now or you're quarantined with somebody you don't like maybe I don't know like you know music is gonna hit you like I find even now lyrics are hitting me way different I'm like listening to, to things especially like any songs that have had like the end of the world or these kind of concepts or you know it's 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 interesting how your brain will yeah. filter through a lyric differently depending on the situation Hey, and uh, congratulations. So the International Singer-Songwriter Association nominated mm -hmm. you for uh, Entertainer of the Year, Female Vocalist of the Year, Female Songwriter of the Year, and more. And, and uh, big congrats. Thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't even have an email or anything. I just happened to see one of my other friends had posted um, that uh, people could vote for her. And I was like, oh, that's so great. I'm so happy for her. And I went on. And then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm in like five of these categories. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I'm very, I'm very blessed. Um, you know, uh, they're a great organization and I think I, I, cause I'm only a new affiliate with them. So, um, it's just a, a, an absolute honor, uh, to be honest that they've, uh, that, that, the, you know, they put me in there. So, yeah. and people, oh my gosh, like everybody has been, I just posted it. I, I, I I'm not a one, I don't really like the whole like, oh, vote for me kind of thing because I, you know, just if you want to, you want to. And I, I love my supporters are amazing. So of course I'm just going to allow them the opportunity. Hey, you know, if you feel free, but people have really jumped on it and like have been really awesome about it. So thank you to everybody, by the way, for, for it. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Carry Me, uh, the new song. So it uh, just came out and also, um, should should people go to your website, ClaireCunninghamMusic.com, to find more about it, to purchase it? What would what, what would you like fans to do? Oh, are you talking about some of my latest single, Grey Lady? Is it? Um, yeah, Grey Lady and Carry Me. That one really um, stood out. 
Yeah, so carry me, yeah, the Celtic EDM one. Um, yeah, anything you ever want to find out or um, if for, I always just um, direct people to my website, which um, is the easiest way for, because all my links are up there um, and you can find out like all, I, I, I now run my own website. I was, I was, um, I had a website developer guy, but I've actually managed uh, with a bit more time now to be able to, you know, maneuver around it. So um, all my news articles and everything, I'm keeping them quite up to date right now. But yes, you can get Carry Me um, alongside, um, yeah, right. my late Grey Lady as well, all along um, the platform. So whatever you listen to, I think you can basically find my music. Right. Um, you know, Spotify. Um, Deezer, I think, is one. Uh, Pandora, um, I mean, iTunes, Apple Music, all all the goodness. <laughs> and, and obviously, we can download directly from your website. Um, I think there's a link that says um, music, and then uh, or listen, and then you can listen on any platform that you want oh, gotcha. to. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, because I don't have like physical copies of any, so. In the world that we're living in right now, um, I used to have like a, a physical CD. And of course, when I was out in Sweden with Thunder Mother, you can still purchase like vinyls and CDs of that. Um, I personally, there's there's no need for artists right now, especially if it's just a single, um, to go to that effort of, <laughs> of printing out a, um, a CD, which I was a fan of. I grew up on them, so. I personally love them. I think maybe if I do an EP uh, or I do the three, see, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm still, we're in, still in discussion about that. So, but if I do, I'll probably do a limited um, copy of them. But anybody who wants any of my music, you can always purchase or download or stream it on any platform. So yeah, my website, clairecunninghammusic.com. Clairecunninghammusic.com and Claire is C-L-A-R-E. Um, I'd love to book you for a show in Dallas once the danger passes. Um, man, that would be great. I would love that. Um, my plan was to do a lot more traveling this year. <laughs> um, I had everything canceled. It was um, quite an upsetting start to uh, everything because there was some great uh, events. And a lot of, you know, we had a lot of great events um, set up for tornado relief you know and um, so then I chose for my first month of doing my home live streams to uh, donate any money I got for the tornado fund so I was blessed that I was able to do that um, and yeah and speaking of donations um, I think there's a week left but my latest single Grey Lady um, is in connection with Pascon Palliative Care on Nantucket Island and they're really doing well right now with the fundraising so um it the song is literally written about Nantucket where my sister and her husband and a lot of friends and family live um so if anybody wants to download it it's the it's on Amazon and iTunes and we have donors that are going to match it to the dollar um so that's why I was like trying to push that one um yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely say it again great lady and this supports on uh, Nantucket Island and uh, and and you've got connections and family there, but it's yeah. an important cause. And help, it is, yeah. Help me it understand. Is. Help me understand the other one. You, you were. Uh, I saw something about the NHS fundraiser. So now, look. Um, d does the I, I I know that you're Irish and you're still connected to your country. Um, and so do do they run out of money sometimes, or or just when it when it's a serious thing, they 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 ask for donations from the public. So the um, the NHS, uh, I just did it like a couple of hours ago, and um, that's a British, um, it's the national healthcare system. And so I lived in the UK for eight years um, and I used the NHS, thank you, <laughs> they're amazing. Um, because unlike America, the NHS um, cover everybody. There's no, you don't have to have health insurance in, in the UK, you can if you want to, but it's a state funded uh, healthcare system. And of course, the UK are under like uh, a lot of stress right now because there's a lot of cases of COVID. 
Um, so I know that the NHS are struggling. They've had, thankfully, they've had a lot of volunteers volunteer to help out. But I think as far as funding is going, I think they are struggling a little. So one of my great friends, Gary, he put it on uh, today um, just as, you know, I think there's different fundraisers happening all over the UK um, for different healthcare uh, systems, but that's the major healthcare system that runs through the UK. Um, so like, I mean, as far as them running out of money, I've, I, I haven't heard or been watching a lot. I've, I've kind of, I've had to kind of step away from all news and things because I've, I've never been a one to watch it or read newspapers. Um, I like to keep my body balanced in a positive um, setting and watching the news does not do that for me. So um, of course, over this uh, last few weeks, it's, it's changed a bit. All I do know is that they've run out of money for small businesses and self-employed people. So that's kind of <laughs> a bummer. Um, but I think it's just, it's just been beautiful to see so many people come together at such a crazy time and just be a unit. And I mean, what an amazing, like, time we are in right now and i don't mean to make light of anything that's going on um because it's an awful time for some people and we will see repercussions of it but i think if we could just get in the mindset and actually think of how um how much good is going to come of it uh and and focus on on moving forward with different mindsets i think i think this is no, I think I we're, never, we're never going to have this ever again. So, well, let's hope not. <laughs> right. And Claire, I agree with you. I think our planet needed to reset and mm -hmm. uh, that people hopefully will have a new frame to consider what it means to live together after the danger passes. And uh, I, I do, I agree with you. Yeah. Like it's, it's going to teach people a lot more compassion and appreciation for everything. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen a couple of posts with people saying, oh, I thought I'd never say I'd miss my job. And I, I kind of like, I, I kind of get upset a bit because I was like, I have never, ever, ever taken what I have for granted. Like not even once I legit like love my life and I love what I do. And so when it gets ripped away from you, I'm just like, okay, I surrender this is the new norm right now um but i <laughs> to say i'm going to be appreciative even more than i have been like yeah is an understatement and i think i think it's also maybe it's because it's my field or creative people but i think i think people are really gonna have a newfound appreciation for you know music and the arts you know those that are not in real jobs, where are you all now? You're watching and wanting right. entertainment. Yes. And, you know, it's what personally I think makes the world go round. It's, it's healing for people, but it's also a form of socializing. And when people don't have that, they're like, oh, you know. So I think, yeah, I think, and, and people watching, everybody whether you're starting out in the music industry or your top tier level everybody's in the same boat there nobody can yeah. tour you can sing nobody can right. you know and it's crazy yes you're right it's kind of an equalizer for all levels of talent in in the, yeah. yeah i see your point it's 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 and i think that's why um you know, I, I, people can play victim, but we're all in this together. Everybody's in the same boat. And there's no one race or culture or country being subjected to it more. We are all in this together. And everybody's going to come out of it differently. <laughs> there, there's, and people, there are always going to be two sides of how um, something like this will play out. But I do hope for the greater good that everybody takes something and brings a positive to uh, you know um 
going forward after this. But I think I think there, I, I I truly believe um, it's it's going to change for the better. Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I I hope so too. Hey, I was at a festival a year year and a half ago, and Casey Musgraves worth performing, and I thought of Claire Cunningham. I thought you should be up there. You are Clay, Casey Musgraves. You are the talent, the new talent in country blues and and uh, and, and singer songwriter. And in, in my opinion, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. What festival was it? It was uh, the. It was in Marfa, Texas, uh, and it's called Trans Pecos. Wow. And I guess Sounds it was two years ago. So it's way out in West Texas. So mm -hmm. if you ever go to that, you have to drive through Dallas on the way from Nashville. Yeah. Okay. So so just give me a heads up. <laughs> I will. I will. Dallas has still been on the bucket list probably since we last spoke because um, I've been to Austin, uh, Houston I haven't either. So I, uh, I do, it's, it's definitely on my um, to-do list. And like I said, this year I, <laughs> I really did. I had a lot of plans to go out and, and tour, but you know, um, I've personally, I've, relished this time i've needed it um mentally um and emotionally and everything and creatively um so i going forward will definitely be able to yeah the, i just feel it's like a whole it's like a reset yeah, um, yeah because i'm the kind of person who's just going 90 mile an hour seven days a week to exhaustion like i have been exhausted uh, I have been hospitalized. I have, I have been through a lot emotionally because I've pushed myself uh, to that point. And then when you lose control, as I've, the whole world has lost it, um, it's a nice little like, no, just go and rest. <laughs> um, I'm still very active and I'm doing a lot, but there's just not that same onset of having to get things done or go and see people or you know there's just the pressure has just alleviated a little bit which is nice there you go there you go and um hey so a message to viewers hey, you think your life has trouble uh we're talking to claire cunningham and her city was demolished by a tornado last month and now she's in the pandemic and she's the most positive person i know <laughs> and i'm gonna i'm gonna send you more positive vibes i am Claire, I am. And I, I, I just want to wrap this up by saying I really appreciate you and I, I really do respect you and thank you for carving out some time to, to talk to me tonight. Any time at all. And thank you always for the support. Seriously, because, you know, and I'm truly, truly, truly blessed with, um, with you know, shows like yourself and just fans across and the world. Like, I mean... I really do have the best unit and and I always hope that I do and deliver for you guys as much as I can and and yeah and if I can be a ray of positivity for people but you know I work very hard on that so it's not like I sit here and I'm you know there is a lot of work that goes into being this way um, and one which I'm going to start sharing with the world very soon um, I'm going to be uh, I think through talking to a lot of people, maybe doing more podcasts and um, because there's a whole other side to me other than my music, but I think they connect very, um, very well. So I think, you know, there is the exercise, there is the music, but there's also the mindset and the spiritual um, energy uh, within. So uh, if oh, I can yeah. at all give anybody any advice or at least give some healing, I will be learning some more, but yeah then I'm happy to do that. <laughs> we appreciate you a lot, Claire Cunningham. Go to clairecunninghammusic.com to, to find out more about this, this wonderful expat from Ireland who now is, uh, now is here. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I'm happy for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. It's great to see you. And uh, we'll talk soon, I hope. Yes, absolutely. And have, uh, stay safe out there as well. Thank you, Claire. Bye now. Bye. We want you to elevate your life by going underground. By that we mean supporting independent art, independent music, independent print, independent movies.